If you're not aware already, Pokemon Go just had a big move rebalance in the game, affecting trainer battles in a pretty massive way. Most importantly, the boosting moves, such as Ancient Power, Ominous Wind, bemoaning all of your Ultra League and Master League battles, have been nerfed, and many Grass-type Pokemon and Grass-type attacks have been buffed. In this video, I'm going to be going over these buffs and nerfs with you to help you understand what all took place and also let you know which Pokemon are the winners here of the April 2020 update and the losers of the April 2020 update. To make this nice and simple, I will be going over each of the changes piece by piece here. Of course, if you do want to reference any one section of this video, I do have timestamps pinned in the description. And also, if you want to reference any of this information in a text-based format, I do have the meta implications of April 2020 Trainer Battle Rebalance article from GamePress in the description. Now, without further ado, let's get into it. And uh, just to let you know what the format's going to be like here, I'm going to go over the changes to each of these attacks, but I won't cover the specific Pokemon right away. Then we're going to go over the updated Pokemon here, and then we're going to double back, and then we'll talk about the Bullet Seed Pokemon, the Energy Ball Pokemon, so on and so forth. So first off, we have Bullet Seed. Bullet Seed has always been a pretty bad fast attack in Pokemon Go PvP, uh, but now it generates more energy. So what does that mean for it? Well, Bullet Seed is effectively now a Snarl clone. So Snarl's update was pretty big for Pokemon with Snarl, looking at U Shift Tree and uh, Umbreon there. Definitely appreciated the Snarl update. Now the Bullet Seed update. Bolt Seed is as good as Snarl. This means Bolt Seed has now gone from being a kind of a joke tier attack, definitely held a ton of Pokemon back, to actually being a really good move. In uh, some ways, it's even better than Vine Whip because it does have that higher energy gain. That said, Vine Whip does have more damage and energy per turn combined. It's a, uh, what, 6.5 move, where these guys just hit 6 on the nose. So Vine Whip is technically better, but when it comes to gaining energy rapidly, Bullet Seed will be the better move there, so that's pretty hype. Next up we have Energy Ball. Energy Ball uh, now charges more quickly and has a chance of lowering the opponent's defense stat by one stage. So what does this mean for Energy Ball? Well, Energy Ball is now basically an Earth Power or Psychic clone. Earth Power and Psychic are as good as Thunderbolt, Ice Beam, Flamethrower, etc. So Energy Ball has basically gone from being a joke tier, terrible attack to actually being a respectable move. There are grass type attacks that are better, like I'd much rather use Frenzy Plant or Leaf Blade, but now Energy Ball is a not bad move, which is pretty big for Pokemon that were relying on Energy Ball for their grass type damage. Next up we have Leaf Tornado. Leaf Tornado has been buffed to now have a 50% chance to decrease your opponent's attack stat by two stages instead of one. So this puts it in the line of uh, Octazooka, for example, which is pretty nice. I mean, a 50% chance to lower your opponent's attack by one stage, that's like a really bad Icy Wind. Now it's just Grass Octazooka, which is pretty nice. Going from a joke tier move to actually a respectable attack. Then we have the big drops here. Yeah, Ancient Power, Silver Wind, and Ominous Wind have all been nerfed to heck. Uh, their energy hasn't been changed, except for Ominous Wind. Ominous Wind used to cost 40 energy, now it costs 45, like the other moves. And their damage has been decreased. So Ancient Power and Silver Wind have gone from 70 damage to 45. And Ominous Wind has gone from 50 to 45. So in terms of Ancient Power and Silver Wind, this is a massive nerf to their damage. Before, they were really good attacks, as good if not better than other 45 energy cost charge moves that also had a 10% chance to boost your attack and your defense by two stages, which is pretty insane. Uh, but now, now their damage has been nerfed in a pretty big way. They're mostly boosting moves now. And then similar with Ominous Wind. In fact, the Ominous Wind nerf is even more grievous because it was a 40 energy cost charge move, now it's a 45 energy cost charge move. So now it's not as easy to bait with, which means it's far less ubiquitous of an attack. Like a good bait move that has the chance of boosting your stats to high heaven, that sounds amazing. But now, it's a little bit slower, which means it's not nearly as good. Now all this nerf is pretty massive, as you're going to find out later in this video, um, it, it's really not affecting these Pokemon as much as you might think it would be. Then aside from the move rebalances, uh, some Pokemon now have move pool expansions. So first up we have Blossom with 
Bullet Seed. So Blossom's always been a really good Razor Leafer. It's a mono grass type Pokemon, more tanky than the Victory Bell. So if you wanted a non-poison type Razor Leafer or a tankier Razor Leafer, Blossom was the go-to Pokemon for that. Having Bullet Seed gives it that extra level of variety because now is it a fast move damaging Pokemon or is it a charge move damaging Pokemon? That Leaf Blade definitely keeps it threatening and on par with the Razor Leaf damage. Uh, so it's definitely an interesting change for Blossom there. And basically all Pokemon that had Bullet Seed and Razor Leaf before are gonna be feeling this, uh, this kind of buff, this interesting expansion of their repertoire because of the duality of Bullet Seed and Razor Leaf big damage with okay energy gains, or okay damage with big energy gains. If they got the Leaf Blade, uh, it can go either way here. Now as far as Blossom goes in the overall meta, it's pretty dang good, um, but it definitely wants a better secondary charge move. Uh, right now it's got Dazzling Gleam, I think, and Return as its main options. Dazzling Gleam just isn't enough to really threaten the Altaria. Uh, it's, it's so little that at that point you may as well be using Return to threaten Altaria and then threaten other neutral targets with it. Um, but <laughs> neither option's really all that great. So if Blossom were to get another move pool expansion in the future, I could see Blossom being a top tier grass type Pokemon for the Great League. Next up is a pretty interesting one. We have Jumpluff with the Aerial Ace. And Jumpluff is a Pokemon that's benefiting both from the Bullet Seed buff and the Energy Ball buff. So in a sense, this Jumpluff is now sort of like an alternative to Tropius. Comparing them side by side, you'll see that Jumpluff does have a higher stat product than Tropius, and Jumpluff is far less exclusive than Tropius is, so it's going to be easier for people to get a really good Jumpluff than a really good Tropius. If you don't know what stat product is, or PvP IVs, all that kind of stuff, link up above and in the description to help that make more sense for you. But TLDR here, Jumpluff, more tanky than Tropius. If you really look at the fine print though, Tropius does have higher stamina than Jumpluff. In fact, it has 20 higher stamina. So in a lot of situations, that stamina is going to be a bit more important than the defense is. So I'd say Tropius, even though this guy does have slightly higher bulk, uh, I'd say they're probably even more or less. The next big difference between the two is going to come down to their move pools. And Tropius here has Air Slash. Air Slash does have lower energy gains than Bullet Seed, but Tropius also has Leaf Blade. And Leaf Blade costs 20 less energy than Energy Ball does. So even though Bullet Seed is the faster energy gaining attack, Leaf Blade is the earlier charge move, and as a net result, Tropius is going to be the faster Pokemon if it's using its Air Slash set. Of course, Tropius also has the duality of being able to run Razor Leaf for even more heavy grass type damage, and that Razor Leaf combined with the Leaf Blade is still going to put it ahead of Jumpluff as far as being a pure grass type Pokemon goes. So as far as like Sylph Cups are concerned, or players that can't access Tropius because they don't have anybody to trade with and they have no way of getting to Tropius land, um, Jumpluff is going to be pretty big for them. Overall, Tropius is going to be the much better grass flying type Pokemon though. Next one up is a fun one. We have Ludicolo with Energy Ball. So Ludicolo has the option of running Razor Leaf or Bubble. Bubble is like that kind of all around good attack. It has good damage, good energy gains. Razor Leaf would be like the, I'm gonna fill you full of leaves, I'm here for Razor Leaf damage type of attack. Uh, well, whenever Ludicolo would go into bubble mode, so you know, it could access you know either Hydro Pump or Ice Beam faster, maybe it made more sense to have the water type damage for it in that specific role. Um, it really couldn't do anything on the grass type side of things. Like it had Solar Beam, but when the heck are you gonna charge up to and land a Solar Beam? It's nothing that Ludicolo has easy access to. Well, with Energy Ball, Ludicolo now has a solid grass type attack to pair with its bubble move set. And as a result, it can finally beat Azumarill in a one-on-one -on -one matchup. So Ludicolo now has some anti-Azu swag going on. Then as far as the secondary charge move goes, if Ludicolo has Hydro Pump going on, it can also beat the Registeel. So if you wanted a anti-Reggie, anti-Azu mixed Pokemon, Ludicolo can now fill that role. Of course, if you do have the Ice Beam, then you'll be able to poke at grass type Pokemon coming in to counter you, and you'll also be able to have a heavy hit onto that uh, pesky Altaria there. So while it sucks that Ludicolo can only have two charge moves, uh, until your opponent knows what move set you have, it could literally be any of those three charge moves. And until they know what you have, they won't know what you have, which is pretty good for shield baiting. So overall, I'd say Ludicolo definitely became a much more spicy Pokemon with this update. And for those of you that are involved with Sylph Cups, Ludicolo is a lot more threatening now than it has ever been before. 
Next up, we have Credilly with the Bullet Seed. Credilly has always been a very okay Pokemon for Sylph Cups specifically because of its unique typing and, you know, its bulk. And uh, that's that's mostly it. Unique typing, unique bulk. Uh, I can't remember what cup it was specifically. I think it was uh, either Fusion Cup or Timeless Cup. I, I think it was Timeless Cup. Credilly was on the table uh, as this interesting safe switch Pokemon because you could swap it in, it would get an energy lead, and it has good threatening charge moves in Stone Edge and Grass Knot. So like all of that swirled together, made Credilly a really interesting and powerful Pokemon. Uh, but at the end of the day, it wasn't consistent enough. Like it wasn't getting enough KOs in where it was really like super viable. I feel like Bullet Seed could be that extra push it needs to be a uh, much more viable Pokemon when it comes to Sylph Cups specifically. For the Greater Great League, I don't see a whole lot going on crazy for Credilly, uh, but as far as Sylph Cups are concerned, Credilly is much more of a contender now than it was before. So the next Pokemon we have up here, I feel is the biggest winner of this update in a huge massive way, and I feel like a lot of people are sleeping on it right now. They're going to be waking up soon, and that is Sunshine Form Cherum gaining Fire type Weather Ball. For those of you that aren't aware, Weather Ball is straight up the best charge move in the game. It's just wicked fast, has really good damage, and it's got a lot of type variety going for it. Well, the Fire type Weather Ball, in particular, is uh, quite possibly the best Fire type charge move in the game. You can debate it all you want, like Overheat's got more damage per energy and and uh, Blast Burn is like the signature attack and it's arguably better than Overheat. Okay, I get it, I get it. Um, but all Pokemon that have those attacks, I feel would 100% uh, or would very likely be swapping the Fire-type Weather Ball if they had the opportunity to because it's that freaking good. And now uh, Sunshine Cherim has it, which is insane because it's a Grass-type Pokemon and it now has the best Fire-type Charge move in the game. And Cherim, if you're not aware, has that bullet seed, guys. So really fast energy gains plus fireball. That's nutty. Here I have a mass simulation from PV Poke using the Voyager Cup custom feature here. Uh, for those of you wondering about the Voyager Cup, what is that? It's basically like the Open Great League, but it's got a little bit extra spice to it, right? Uh, that's usually how the Silphorina goes. But yeah, checking it out here in the two shield situation, it has 21 wins and 16 losses. Now this is using the default IVs for all Pokemon here, so the rank 500s. So there are some like, you know, in between situations going on here that I've already picked out for you guys. Uh, for example, Bronzong and Toxicroak here, you are like two to three HP away from being able to land the winning fireball. So as far as these guys are concerned, if you do have a higher rank Cherim going on, specifically a really high HP Cherim, uh, you should be winning those matchups. On the flip side of things, if you have a high rank Bastiodon that you're up against or a high rank Hypno, chances are you may be losing those matchups, especially the Bastiodon one. Most people have high rank Bastiodons. So yeah, Cherim ain't going to be beating that anytime soon. But Hypno is pretty close overall, so watch out. Uh, on the same end of things, if you don't have a high rank Cherim going on and the Bronzong Toxicroak, they're there, they're harassing you. Uh, if you do have like a one fast move energy lead, well then you'll be getting that fireball, so blam. Uh, now, of course, there is also the option to use Razor Leaf on Cherim, which is also nice if you want to get more of the grass type edge going on. And uh, you can see here that there isn't that big of a difference. 26 wins, 10 losses, 1 draw. Things haven't changed too much for Cherim there. And the reason why this is still as good, more or less, as the Bullet Seed set is because this is a two shield situation with Razor Leaf, so the Razor Leaf damage definitely adds up. And Razor Leaf Pokemon always love having that low energy cost charge move to back them up. That's why Blossom and Victory Bell are such good Razor Leafers, because they have the Leaf Blade to back it up, 35 energy cost charge move, big damage. Uh, well, what Cherim has over them now is a fire type 35 energy cost charge move to back it up. So super, super big variety hour here for Cherim. So expect to see this guy in the open Great League in the future because it beats Azumarill and it beats Registeel, which is pretty massive. And when it comes to the Voyager Cup specifically, if you're looking for a grass type before, uh, look at Cherim. And if you're already considering another grass type that wasn't Cherim, um, maybe, maybe start considering Cherim here because Cherim 
pretty insane. And before I move along here, another thing I want to highlight with Cherim here is the Skarmory matchup. Skarmory does beat you, but Skarmory beats all grass type Pokemon. Like Skarmory basically clowns every single grass type Pokemon in the game, except for maybe Shiftree, if Shiftree has an energy lead on it. If it comes into a Cherim, Cherim's going to be threatening it with Weather Ball, which is pretty huge. And uh, given the right set of circumstances, if Cherim has like a bunch of energy behind it and then Skarmory comes in, Skarmory could very easily lose that matchup. Uh, same goes for Tropius, same goes for Venusaur. No other grass type Pokemon has this level of swag of countering grass type counters. So Cherim, Cherim's pretty huge here. In fact, I kind of want to make a video specifically going over how crazy Cherim is, like if this wasn't enough already. So if you are interested in seeing Cherim in action or a more specific in-depth Cherim video, uh, well, make sure to subscribe to Swag Tips there. And then finally, we have Tangrowth. Tangrowth getting Rock Slide. Now they quote Tangrowth as being a good Pokemon in the Master League. Don't, don't use Tangrowth in the Master League. I mean, I'm not going to tell you what to do, man, but Dialga is everywhere, steel type Pokemon are everywhere. Like the Master League is basically steel types and dragon type Pokemon. Uh, Kyogre and Groudon do exist in it, uh, but, but Tangrowth is definitely not the answer in the Master League. Uh, Tangrowth is more of a Great League Pokemon here, and getting Rock Slide in the Great League is nice because now you've got some retaliation against the Altaria, for example, and uh, also the Alolan Marowak, uh, but it's really not all that massive. So I'd say Tangrowth getting Rock Slide, probably more of a Sylph Cup type of thing. I mean, anything getting new fun toys to play with is definitely good for the Sylph Cup. Uh, but Tangrowth in the Open Great League, I don't really think it's it. Now that out of the way, let's get into the Bullet Seed, Energy Ball, Leaf Tornado, etc. Winners and losers here. So when it comes to Bolt Seed Pokemon here, we got Breloom, Executor, Sceptile, Alolan Executor. People have been asking me about these Pokemon, like are they better with the buffed Bullet Seed? Breloom and Executor, uh, definitely not so much. Breloom already has Counter. Counter is the best fast move in the game, so I really don't see Bullet Seed really competing with it. When it comes with Executor, Executor is mostly there for the confusion damage, not so much its charge move damage, so I feel like Executor is definitely going to want to be sticking with the confusion. Uh, maybe in a specific Sylph Cup, up, bullet Seed could have an edge for it, but for general utility on Executor, I think Confusion's still it. And then when it comes to Alolan Executor, Alolan Executor still has really, really bad charge moves, so I can't see anything happening for it. Then when it comes to Sceptile, Sceptile with the Bullet Seed is pretty nice since it does have better energy gains than the Fury Cutter, um, but Sceptile is just, just too soft to really work out in the Great League, or I guess in the Ultra League for that matter as well. If you're using the Earthquake set, you're basically like a worse Meganium. If you're using the uh, Aerial Ace set, then you're basically like, what, a worse Tropius, a worse Jumpluff, a worse uh, Superior for that matter. Now for a lot of different Pokemon, having that mystery box kind of going on, like the Variety Hour, is pretty good for it. But when it comes to Sceptile, Sceptile is just hitting too soft and is too fragile itself to really be that threatening. I'd say if you want a grass type doing unique stuff, go for consistency and bulk and uh, not Lord Sceptile here. Then we got Weeping Bell here, and Weeping Bell is pretty interesting with the buff because Bullet Seed has better energy gains than Vine Whip, and Seed Bomb happens earlier than Frenzy Plant, and Weeping Bell also has Sludge Bomb. So in a way, Weeping Bell is a faster version of Venusaur. That said, Venusaur is a much more bulky Pokemon than Weeping Bell is, and uh, you know, Vine Whip, more damage, Frenzy Plant, a lot more damage. So Venusaur is a more powerful Pokemon, but Weeping Bell is like a faster, flakier version of Venusaur. I think that's pretty interesting. Um, mostly interesting probably for Sylph Cups, where we have restricted formats, maybe they're banning Venusaurs for one reason or another. Weeping Bell could pick up Venusaur's slack. So pretty interesting for Weeping Bell. Don't count it out. It's not just uh, not Victory Bell here. You know what I'm saying? We already talked about Cherim, the sun god here, and how it annihilates everybody. And we also talked about Blossom and Credilly. One Pokemon we did not talk about, though, is Ferrothorn. And Ferrothorn getting Bullet Seed is like the final piece of the Ferrothorn puzzle to actually make it a meta Pokemon. Ferrothorn was already good in the Open Great League because it was a grass steel type Pokemon, so really heavy resistances and really annoying for other grass types to deal with. The thing is, is that Pokemon like Tropius and Venusaur could still deal with the Ferrothorn because Ferrothorn really wasn't whipping out charge moves fast enough. Now with the Bullet Seed update, Ferrothorn can whip out those charge moves fast enough. 
So Ferrothorn is finally a meta viable Pokemon. Expect to see it in the Open Great League going into the future there. Flash Cannon is enough to deal with the Venusaur. It's enough to deal with the Tropius. And Flash Cannon does give it a play against Altaria. It's still going to lose to Altaria in a straight situation. But before, Altaria could just zero shield the thing without much to fear. Now, if Ferrothorn spends a shield, Altaria doesn't. Or Altaria spends a shield, Ferrothorn spends two shields. Ferrothorn can now win those matchups, which is a huge boost for Ferrothorn. And finally here we have Mantine. Mantine is just kind of an overall tricky Pokemon to deal with in the Great League because it's got the Bubble Beam to lower your attack stat and it's got the Ice Beam to deal some damage there. Uh, so when it came to the fast move, it mostly came down to what kind of matchups you wanted Mantine to do better. If you went with the Wing Attack, you'd be handling Grass-type Pokemon better. If you went with the Bubble, you'd be handling like a wider variety of matchups better. Bullet Seed was always kind of in the back row because it just sucked as an attack, but now Bullet Seed is Mantine's fastest energy gaining fast move, which means it can Ice Beam faster and it can reach Bubble faster. So that could be pretty huge for Mantine. That said, Bubble does do more damage for it as a fast move in more matchups, and then Wing Attack does help it out more in the grass type matchups. Right now, I want to say Bubble is the better move, uh, but we could be seeing some spicy plays coming from that Bullet Seed now because it is the faster energy gaining attack. Then next on our list here is Energy Ball. So the Pokemon that mostly benefit from the Energy Ball buff are uh, Razor Leaf Pokemon. Uh, such as like Obama Snow, Wormadam, Bayleaf, Grodel, because having that lower energy cost charge move is important to back up their grass type damage. Like you want to put some shield pressure on. If you're all Razor Leaf, no shield pressure, then uh, you might be wasting your time and burning your own shields to get some damage in. Uh, so having the energy ball have a lower energy cost is definitely a huge buff for all these Pokemon. Maybe not so much Grodel, because Grodel already had the body slam happening, um, but Energy Ball is like an extra damage sort of side pick that Grodel can now play with. And Wormadam's a confusion user. It is Wormadam's earliest charge move, so really big for Wormadam there. Wormadam, my mistake. Then when it comes to like Mew and Galvantula, uh, Mew, it's an interesting toy for Mew because you can use it to hit water type Pokemon and ground type Pokemon with, so maybe Mew might want to use it. Uh, it's definitely now a tool that Mew can think about that it really wasn't thinking about before. Um, but I do think Mew also gets Grass Knot, and I think Grass Knot's probably going to be a better toy for Mew. So, not really a move for Mew. Maybe if you land on it and you're running low on charge TMs, you might want to stick with it. Uh, but I think Grass Knot is going to be the better attack for Mew when it comes to grass type charge moves. When it comes to what the best moveset is for Mew in general, uh, you figure it out, man. Depends on what you want your Mew to do and why. Uh, then when it comes to Galvantula, I'd have to say that the uh, Discharge and the Bug Buzz are going to be the better attacks for it. When it wants to use Energy Ball, it's probably going to be more of a Sylph Cup type of thing. Then next on our list, we have Leaf Tornado. Now, all the buff to Leaf Tornado is definitely good, being able to lower the attack stat by two stages instead of just one, so it's now an Octazooka clone. Uh, none of the Pokemon that get it really care about that or really want to use it still. Uh, Superior would much rather use Grass Knot for the damage. Shift Tree and Victory Bell would much rather use the Leaf Blades for the damage. And then when it comes to being a secondary charge move to pair up with stuff, Superior definitely wants that Aerial Ace, Shift Tree, Poor positive wants to have that foul play, like a million percent wants to have foul play. And then Victory Bell has Sludge Bomb and Acid Spray to play with. Acid Spray 100% lowers your opponent's defense stat by one stage, and then Sludge Bomb can just nuke stuff. So I really don't see any of these Pokemon wanting to give up any of their other attacks for Leaf Tornado. The reason why Octazooka, the water type parallel to Leaf Tornado here, was so big for Kingdra is because Kingdra needed any charge move to have a lower energy cost than its current charge moves, and Akzuka filled that role for it. And then Akzuka happened to have the added benefit of being even better 50% of the time, which made a already ubiquitous move for Kingdra just a super amazing great god tier move for Kingdra. So that happened for Kingdra, not happening for these Pokemon. And then finally we have the big ones. Ancient Power, Silver Wind, and Ominous Wind. And I'm going to tell you guys right now, I do want to do a video going more in depth on these three attacks and how the nerf affects them and why it doesn't affect these Pokemon too much, but I'll give you the summary here right now. When it comes to Giratina Altered Form and Togekiss, the main users of Ancient Power, this doesn't really affect them too much. 
and I feel like this nerf was definitely needed for these Pokemon. Uh, when it comes to Giratina Altered Form in particular, with the Ancient Power being as strong as it was, it could just throw it onto a Togekiss, a Charizard, or an Articuno, three Pokemon that are meant to quote-unquote counter it. Like, Charizard isn't a direct counter, but it's like kind of like a soft, like threatening Pokemon. Um, basically, Ancient Power is so powerful that it could flip those matchups into Giratina's favor. Now that it's nerfed, it's still a move that Giratina's gonna wanna use against those Pokemon, um, but it isn't as big as it was before. So that all said, Giratina is still gonna wanna carry Ancient Power so it can manage Charizards, Togekisses, and uh, Articunos coming at it, but it's not gonna be able to flip those matchups as easily as it could before. It can still benefit from the boost, and in those matchups, it could still get the boost, and in some potentially losing matchups, you may want to throw Ancient Power as an attempt to potentially get the boost, but it's no longer as ubiquitous of an attack as it was before. So basically, still a really good move for Giratina to have, but it's not as like game-changing as it once was. Then when it comes to Togekiss, Togekiss was mostly throwing out Ancient Powers because it's its lowest energy cost charge move, not so much to get the boost. So Ancient Power will still have that kind of shield pressure going on for it. It'll just do less damage now if the opponent chooses to not shield. And Togekisses out there are still going to definitely want to carry it because it can flip their losing matchups should they get the boost. For example, you're up against Venusaur, you throw an Ancient Power, you get the boost. You can now charm down Venusaur and you can tank a Sludge Bomb while you're at it. So pretty big for Togekiss. So I don't see that going away. Now I know people out there are like, oh, they didn't nerf the right part of the boost. The reason why we hate the boost is because it boosts. Well, that's the whole point of the attacks. There's supposed to be this really low chance to get a really big benefit. It's supposed to have that high risk, high reward kind of aspect going on for it. With it having 70 base power before, there really wasn't too much risk of using these attacks. You weren't really like missing out on anything by throwing ancient power. Now, you do have the opportunity to miss out on using a stronger dragon claw or a stronger flamethrower. So there is more risk to this attack now. So if you hated the boost because of the boost, the boost is still going to be out there and these boosting Pokemon are still going to be using these attacks, but the attacks are less good than they were before. They're no longer as useful. So countering a Giratina, for example, with like an Articuno or a Togekiss is going to go a lot more consistent for you. You don't have to fear the ancient power like you did before. Then we have the Ominous Wind nerf, and the Ominous Wind nerf is huge, like a lot bigger than the Ancient Power one, because they also nerfed its energy. Before it was 40 energy cost, now it's 45. So Giratina Origin Form went from being the number one Pokemon in the Master League to now being number 10. And the number one Pokemon in the Master League now is now the Altered Form, because the Altered Form hasn't been slapped as hard as the Origin Form was. In fact, the power of Ominous Wind was kinda holding the Altered Form back because the Origin Form could more easily subdue the Altered Form. Uh, being number 10 in the Master League is still extremely good. Giratina Origin Form is still an extremely threatening Pokemon, but this has been a huge consistency slap to it because it can no longer bait as easily with Ominous Wind and it can't really chonk stuff down with Ominous Wind like it could before all the while potentiating the boost. So previously, Ominous Wind was a very low risk attack with tons of rewards. Now it's like a kind of a risky move and the rewards that you get from it might not really be worth it. So if you haven't powered up a Giratina Origin form for the Master League already, you might maybe want to look into an alternative here because this is, this is pretty big. And when it comes to Giratina Origin form in the Ultra League, it was already worse than Giratina Altered form to begin with. And now I, I don't really see it having that much play going on in the Ultra League there. So sorry, Giratina Origin form, the party's over. And then when it comes to the Silver Wind nerf, it kind of felt a little bit unnecessary, uh, mostly because no really good Pokemon had Silverwind, and those that did have Silverwind didn't really have a whole lot of variety to back up the Silverwind. So the only Pokemon really affected by the Silverwind nerf is Venomoth, and Venomoth is mostly there for confusion damage. If you use Silverwind, it's because you wanted to try to get the boost, so that really hasn't changed a whole lot. Uh, that said, I guess the nerf is kind of nice because Silverwind was like a really low risk attack still, like really high damage, better damage than the Poison Fang would have brought in. 
uh, and then it also had the chance to boost. So Venomoth's having less damage from Silverwind, I'd say that's a little bit more balanced. So Venomoth is definitely going to be feeling this when it comes to Sylph Cups, but in Sylph Cups where Venomoth can dominate, it still will dominate. And there you have it. If you didn't understand what was going on with this update before, well now you definitely do. If you have any questions on this content, comment below, let me know what's up, and I'll be happy to help you out. And if you enjoyed this content and you want to see more like it, maybe you want to know just how crazy Cherim is now, or maybe you want to know exactly what's going on with these boosts attacks and like why these Pokemon are good, why the boost is good, why it isn't good. Uh, I do plan on doing a video about that too, so subscribe to Swag Tips if you haven't already. Swag Tips. I'd also like to give a special shout out to these patron supporters. If you're not supporting the Swagman on Patreon, well maybe you should. And that is Sunshine Cherim getting Weather Ball. Yo babe, what? you got that you got that Corona cough going on? Cat hair. Oh. Cat hair. Like, you can debate it. You Like, overheat's got more damage, and then there's a flare smash fire blast burn.